only see 570. Why isn't it updating? On what? All right. All right. We're in bear market. Stockmarketfunding.com told you it was coming. If you don't believe me, we're down 727 points. And we got all the short sales. Apple's down to $230. Look at that. Look at it. Take them all out for the big bounce off the bottom. I told everybody that you couldn't stay overbought. This is what happens when you get overbought. We told everyone in the Dow was coming. We told you that we didn't want to see you get hooked. And you may be hooked. Here you go. I'm told it's 835. The Dow ticker. Wow. Almost a thousand points. We call this a capitulation. Whoa, look at that NASDAQ 100. Whoa, look at that. Almost a thousand points down. That's a big shake out. They're going to probably halt trading. We can't stop the selling. Even Kramer doesn't know what to think. How do you like it? It's called 900 points down. We told you. We told you people not to get involved in that. We told you two weeks ago, what happens to exuberance is that exuberance can make up the difference in one day. I can't even keep up with the TikTok. I haven't seen this, buddy. You could have done it a long time ago. Buddy, look at Apple computer. Cancel all orders. Cancel all orders. Cancel all orders. Look at that, down a thousand points. This is what happens to the bulls when they got that exuberance. And I told everyone about the Dow history. And this is it on the tape. It was down over a thousand. Hey everyone, today I'm going through my things that I've learned in 2018. Um, so if you're still here, hopefully you survived the bear market. I know a lot of my friends, they've left, they've gone. I'm pretty much the only one left in this crazy web of things. Um, a lot of people got hurt, you know, money-wise in 2018. And uh, during most of 2018, I was actually learning in paper trading and figuring out how to prepare best for the next next kind of bull run thing um, so I have um, a few notes here and there um, I'll kind of go through them just to show you what uh, I've learned in 2018 to hopefully help somebody that's out there still um, that's surviving in the crypto land uh, and uh, let's get to it so one of the first things that I've learned um, in the bear market especially is always thinking in fiat value now I know that that's you know really kind of common sense but a lot of people get stuck on holding their coins um, holding, you know, I got to hold one Bitcoin, I got to hold 10 Bitcoin or, you know, 100 Ethereum, 200 Ethereum. In a bear market, you want to get whatever you can, when you can. You don't want to basically hold through the whole thing because a lot of people are down now. This is just Bitcoin, but um, Ethereum is down, you know, a lot more or Ripple or any other coin that you're kind of into, right? Um, what do you have to show for, you know, at the end of the day? You, you probably put some money in somewhere wherever you put money in. It could have been 2017, 2018. But you want to make sure that your money is actually being put to good use and going to the right, you know, coin or whichever. So always thinking in a feed value, especially in a bear market. When we're in a bull run, yeah, you want to obtain, you know, more ETH, more Bitcoin, whatever you can. Because you see it's in a bull run and it's going to keep going theoretically until it doesn't, right? So yeah, of course you want to be trading, you know, your BTC pairs, your ETH pairs. Um, it's just a little harder in a bear market when you're trading those because you might be struggling. You might be getting more BTC, but more BTC doesn't mean more fiat, right? Another thing is always take profits. You know, some people that I've run into, they buy and they're like, well, I'll hold it like a stock and I'll hold it for, um, you know, five, ten years. And maybe it'll be worth something. That's You kind of get stuck in these phases of, um, you know, basically just throwing it all to the window and just say, yeah, but 
Bitcoin, you know, in 10 years has went from cents to, you know, $20,000. You know, I might as well just hold my, my coin. It'll be worth some. It, you can do it that way. I per personally don't because there's so much opportunity to make way more. And if you just take profits going up and when things aren't going your way, um, then you get out basically like in a, in a bear market, you basically want to take what you can get. Um, you know, you can trade these waves if you're just buying or if you're shorting and you go the other way. Um, you can make money that way too. And uh, that's another thing is if if you are trying to trade in a bear market, you need to learn how to short. And that's something that I've learned, but it was really hard and struggled for me for, um, you know, the exchanges that we have. BitMEX is really hard for me to trade because I'm always thinking I have to be in a trade because your base value is BTC. And like in a bear market, like I said, you want to be thinking about your fiat value. So the calculations are a lot harder on BitMEX. On, on Bitfinex, they might be a little different. I haven't tried on there yet. Maybe this year. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. The next thing is make sure the trade is worth it. Um, there's no such thing as a free trade. So that's something that uh, I was I learned last year, or this, yeah, last year. I think it was Trader Dante or, or one of the traders YouTubes that I watched. Basically, when you're entering a trade, you want to be thinking about what your reward is and what you're risking, right? So let's say I enter position here. Let's say you entered here and your current risk to reward was pretty high, you know, 19. So whatever you put in here, it's gone up, you know, 56%. Now, if it turns around and comes back and you break even, you know, some people see that as a free trade and it, it, it isn't because if you used all of your capital, let's say you had $10,000, and you've been in and now you're up to $15,000, right? So now if you come back to here and you lose five grand and you try to convince yourself that, oh, it was a free trade, like, like you can't do that. Like you're, you're still losing the five grand, right? You're still losing, just think of it. And, and this is the best way to think of it is if you take the trade and you go all the way up and then you enter the trade here, are you okay losing that much? If I went like this and you reopen the trade you know, at the current spot of where it is, are you okay losing? Let's just say you closed it, reopen the trade, thinking that you're going to get, you know, another 35 something percent. Are you okay losing, you know, 40 something percent? Like you're going to lose the five grand. Like the risk to reward here isn't worth it. You're not over one. So you're risking more than you are going to make. Like that's, it's pointless. So that's one of the things I learned in the bear market was make sure the trade is always worth it. There's no such thing as a free trade. Triangles and chart patterns have their place. So this is current price action. These, you know, triangles, people call them meme triangles, but it's not. It's like they happen for a reason, right? Um, and then you trade them, meaning when they exit, then you look for where they should go, right? Then this one, you look for where it should go. It should come back here. This one, whichever way it goes, it should be the distance. And then here is just kind of, you know, January kind of action. But triangles, chart patterns, yeah, they're the basic forms of TA and, you know, not all bear flags and stuff happen. You enter them when they actually exit. And it's easier to draw these with using a line chart. You can actually see where things are coming together and things are going apart. Another thing to look for is the, as everyone using TA and stuff, triangles, whichever, you're also against, you know, market makers, people that are trading these patterns. Elliott Waves, people charting these. Fibonacci, people trading points of this. EMA traders, order blocks, just like this. People looking at longs versus shorts even. Um, then, you know, you got an ATR, kind of like what I use. You also got people doing guppy and that kind of thing. So you have to find confluence between all types of TA. And if one is giving a buy and the other one's giving a sell, you have to back each side and see which one is most strong and which one is going to go right so another thing i did in 2018 was i started creating these articles i'll leave a link to the articles in my uh, description but it um the first seven articles here are mostly about risk management um the emotion you know wave and things like when the commodity isn't real um and in this in this article the um writing the emotional wave i talk about how this is basically all trading is basically trying to find these waves and find the waves inside waves and that's basically what everything is right market makers looking for waves inside waves 
Elliot waves are waves inside waves. Fibonacci is finding the waves inside waves. EMAs is just smoothing out the waves. Order blocks are finding you know price action in between all the waves. Long versus short, even you're finding waves in these. ATR is all about staying outside of the waves and just riding it up until it doesn't work. And Guppy's also in that kind of formula. So that's what all the traders are trying to find. And you just need to find, a, you know, some way to measure these waves and figure out how the waves are moving. And that's basically one of the ways that you can win against, you know, others in trading. Another thing I learned last year was, of course, the ATR and the Guppy. And I'm combining them both, both into an ATR. GC is what I call them. So when they both, you know, activate for a long, that's usually when you want to go long. You stay outside of these ripples and you just put your trailing stop on. And then when it hits, you'll see it correct. And when you get the double confirm on both ends, that's usually when you want to enter and this one overlaps when you want to exit. Um, so that's kind of how I, you know, have been trading is just follow these. And uh, it's, you know, I've mostly been paper trading in 2018. But uh, 2019, I'll be using, you know, real capital and stuff behind these trades to do more and uh, to actually make more money and stuff. And the last thing, of course, is always have a stop loss. And if things aren't going your way, you need to figure out to get out. Um, when they hit, you just let them hit. You don't move them. Um, you always have them and you never let them go. Other than that, that's pretty much all the things um, that I learned in 2018. And uh, that's about it for this video. And I said, I only see 570. Why isn't it updating? On what? All right. All right. We're in bear market. Stockmarketbuddy.com told you it was coming. If you don't believe me, we're down 727 points, and we got all the short sales. Apple's down to $230. Look at that. Look at it. Take them all out for the big bounce off the bottom. I told everybody that you couldn't stay overbought. This is what happens when you get overbought. And we told everyone in the Dow was coming. We told you that we didn't want to see you get hooked, and you may be hooked here you go i'm told it's 835 the dow ticker wow almost a thousand points we call this a capitulation whoa look at that nasdaq 100 whoa look at that almost a thousand points down that's a big shakeout they're gonna probably halt trading we can't stop the selling. Even Kramer doesn't know what to think. How do you like it? It's called 900 points down. We told you. We told you people not to get involved in that. We told you two weeks ago. What happens to exuberance is that exuberance can make up the difference in one day. I can't even keep up with the TikTok. I haven't seen this. Buddy, you could have done it a long time ago. Buddy, look at Apple Computer. Cancel all orders. Cancel all orders. Cancel all orders. Look at that. Down a thousand points. This is what happens to the bulls when they got that exuberance. And I told everyone about the Dow history. And this is it on the tape. It was down over a thousand.